I'm Miss Lannister. I'm Miss Watson. And welcome to Virtual Gardening Club. You know, Miss Lannister, something I love about Virtual Gardening Club is when we hear from the children that watch it and they tell us about all the things that they've been inspired to do because they've watched Virtual Gardening Club. The other day, I received an email from Alicia and it put a huge smile on my face when she said that she was inspired to do some beautiful pressed flowers. You're absolutely right, Miss Watson. I felt inspired after reading that email too, and I started to think about flowers and how beautiful they are to look at. Most of our episodes have focused on things in the garden that you can eat. So I think it's high time that we did an episode on flowers, don't you, Miss Glenister? I do indeed, Miss Watson. Let's start our virtual gardening club adventure into the fantastic world of flowers. There are lots of things that you can plant in your garden to eat and enjoy. So sometimes it might seem that flowers don't have an important role to play because they don't produce anything that you can eat. But aside from adding joy and colour to your garden, did you know that flowers can also help your other plants to grow? I didn't know that, Miss Glenister. What do flowers do that help other plants to grow? Well, there's a special thing you can do in your garden called companion planting. A companion is a friend or somebody who keeps you company. So you can plant a flower next to or nearby another plant and they can keep them company. So do the flowers help keep the other plants company and then they grow faster and they produce more food? Well, not exactly. Different flowers are good companions for different reasons. For example, if you're growing courgettes, you can plant calendulas nearby as they attract pollinators and other predatory insects that can prevent pests such as aphids and blackfly. Oh really? I'd better get a calendula plant soon then, Miss Blenister. I've got a serious blackfly problem on my courgettes. Are there any other flowers that are good companions for plants? They are indeed, Miss Watson. Marigolds are also fantastic friends for plants such as beans, potatoes and sweet corn as they help to repel whitefly, aphids and to deter eelworms that might be after the potatoes. Nasturtiums are also fabulous friends to broccoli, cabbage and other brassicas as they attract white cabbage butterflies away from them and reduce the damage. See, all of these plants are helping each other out. Wow, Miss Glenister, it sounds like companion planting can have lots of benefits. I think I'm going to pop into the garden centre when I have a chance and get some new friends for my plants. It'll be nice to add a splash of colour to the garden too. It makes me feel so happy when I look out the window and I can see lots of things growing in the garden. It sure does, Miss Watson. I love looking in my garden every day to see if something has changed or grown. For example, when I opened my greenhouse today, I spotted this flower growing on my pepper plant, which means my peppers are finally starting to grow. And talking of growing and changing, we haven't checked on our sunflowers for a while. No, we haven't, Miss Glenister. I think we should, considering this episode is about flowers after all. Okay, well, I am going to measure this sunflower because as you can see, the flower head has started to come out and that means it's probably not going to grow any taller because all the energy will go into the flower opening and the seeds being formed. So, now it's time to measure it. My tallest sunflower is 72 centimetres. If you've got some flowers to spare in your garden, flower pressing is a lovely way to use those flowers and also can make fantastic gifts for your friends. You're absolutely right, Miss Watson. Here I have a necklace that belonged to my grandmother. The necklace is over 50 years old, and as you can see inside, there is a pressed flower. We're going to take inspiration from Alicia today and press our own flowers. Miss Watson, have you ever pressed flowers before? I have tried before, Miss Glenister, but the last time I did it, it didn't work out so well. 
so this time I'm going to try two different ways and see which one works better. Oh, how exciting! I can't wait to see which one works. So the first way that I'm going to try and press flowers is using a flower press. Um, this is a more traditional way. Um, what I have to do is I have to unscrew the, the different um, bolts here. And then, as you can see, there are lots of layers of cardboard. And I have to put my flowers in the middle of these different layers of cardboard and then twist my bolt to make it nice and tight and press the flowers. This can take up to two weeks sometimes, um, depending on the types of flowers that you've chosen. Uh, so I probably won't be able to show you today whether this worked really well. However, I do have another method that is a little faster and mm, hopefully gives you as good results. For this method you will need some flowers, a piece of paper, a piece of kitchen towel, a large heavy plate and a microwave. Here they are. Now I'm going to fold over my kitchen towel and just squish it down very carefully. And now I'm going to fold it into my paper and put it in the microwave. They shouldn't be in the microwave for any more than 30 seconds, but you do need a heavy object like a plate to weigh down on them. Shall we go and try it? Let's see how these look. Beautiful. I might actually put these in just for a little bit longer, maybe 10 more seconds. So here are some of the flowers that I did in the microwave. And here is a card that I have made using the dried flowers. I hope my friend likes their card. There are lots of other things that you can do with dried flowers though. You can make bookmarks, you can make pictures and picture frames, you can even make candles with dried flowers. What do you think Miss Glenister? Wow Miss Watson, who knew flowers were so useful? I'm really glad we got to learn about them today. Children, your activity this week is to use one of these methods to press your own flowers. As Miss Watson said, you can use pressed flowers to make bookmarks, cards, framed pictures or decoration for things around your home like candles. We hope that you have fun and that this brings a little colour to your learning this week. Me too Miss Glenister. That's all we've got time for today, so we'll see you next week for another episode of... Virtual Gardening Club. Okay, it's been one day now. Let's have a look at my flowers in the flower press. So, I've just checked on my pressed flowers. My daisy isn't doing so well. It's looking a little bit squashed. Um, however, the buttercup uh, that I've started pressing it's starting to look quite nice. So I think I might replace the daisy with another flower and check on them in another few days.